Hello everybody, Kat here for Lift It Up Today. I apologize for being gone. I had something I needed to take care of. Um, but we left off at our last chapter, chapter 10, and now we're going on to chapter 11 and of Matthew, and I kind of want to get started uh, because our time is short. Um, so I sent out one question for this chapter, and that is, what does chapter 11 verses 7 through 9 tell us about John and those who heard this message? Um, so basically, um, in those verses, um, Jesus is addressing the crowd and saying, what did you all go out to see? Did you out, go out to see the scenery? Or did you go out to see a reed blowing in the wind? No, you didn't go out to see the scenery. You went out to go see something that you thought was pretty important right? You thought you wanted to see either, um, you thought there was John the Baptist that was out there. He was out there in the wilderness and he was preparing the way of the Lord. Um, he was out there preaching and, um, you know, wearing his animal skins and eating his um, locusts and wild honey, you know, and um, they, you know, I mean, they thought, is this Elisha? Is this the Messiah? Is this just a crazy guy? You know, who is this out there? And there are some reasons why they thought maybe he was Elisha. You know, they were always keeping an eye out for the Messiah. Um, but in the Old Testament, if you go to Malachi, um, you can see that he talks about, uh, I believe it's Malachi 3.1, uh, will say what Jesus quoted here in verse 10. Behold, I send my messenger before you who will prepare your way before you. Um, and he is speaking about John the Baptist. Because what he's telling everybody is that John the Baptist is Elisha. Um, he is, if you look in, I believe it is in... John 1.21 and Luke 1.17, those verses speak about John the Baptist coming in the spirit and the power of Elisha. That is why he is, um, he's Elijah, he's a type of Elijah. And if you go down to verse, I believe it is 14 of Matthew 11, um, Jesus says, and if you are willing to receive it, the message, the gospel message, he, John the Baptist, is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears, let him hear. And then if we jump ahead, which I know we're in chapter 11, but if we jump ahead to Matthew 17 and look to uh, verses 10 through 13, we see that Jesus said, let me just move up. All right, I got it right here. And Jesus, um, now in verse 10 of chapter 17 of Matthew, um, the disciples asked Jesus, saying, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus answered and said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already and uh, where am I? And they did not know him, but did to him whatever they wanted, whatever they wished. Now, um, you know, we have to get further ahead here, but what's what he's referring to is John the Baptist was killed. He was um, beheaded uh, by Herod the king at the time. Um, and then he says, likewise, the Son of Man, Jesus, is also about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. And then also, if we go on to um, Matthew 11, chapter chapter 11, verse 11, we read, Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Why is he saying that? Because all of the Old Testament prophets um, were working toward, it's like they prophesied about the Messiah, right? But yet, John, John was greater than them because he actually saw with his eyes and personally participated in the fulfillment of what they only prophesied. So basically when he's saying, if we go on to verse, um, or the same verse, he says, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And what does he mean by that? He means us believers um, and I'm gonna read you my note here in my study Bible here um, on that, but all believers, um, after the cross are greater still because they participate in the full understanding and experience of something John merely foresaw in shadowy form, the actual atoning work of Christ, um, the actual work of an atoning work of Christ that we, we have seen, we know of the whole, you know, the whole gospel story. We've 
we've been there through the whole time and we've, we can accept Christ um, to atone for our sins, that's amazing. And John didn't live to see that portion of it. Okay, so if we look at um, the rejection by Jesus' generation here, and that kind of goes into also the next area, rejection of Charles own Bethsaida and Capernaum, because you have people who are just for whatever reason, you have these mostly, you know, like a lot of Pharisees, a lot of the scribes, they were just saying, you know, um, they just didn't want to accept Christ. And Jesus said, you know, here, starting in verse 16, basically, you know, you didn't like John the Baptist. You said, oh, he has a demon. Look at him. He's a wild man in the wilderness. He's just out there screaming all of these, you know, message of the way of salvation. And he's just like, but he's bizarre. And they didn't accept him. And then he's saying, you know, and then here I come. And here, here Jesus comes with his message of grace. And he is um, healing. And he is... Um, you know, speaking to people that the Pharisees wouldn't speak to, the, um, the tax collectors, you know, the sinners, and he's being very kind to them, and, and they don't like him either. They're saying, oh, you're a glutton and a wine bibber. So he's saying, you know, there's just no pleasing. You guys are like kids. You know, you guys are just like spoiled little kids. And um, then he goes on to rebuke the cities of um, you know, Charazan, Bethsaida, um, and then Capernaum next, because he says, you know, he did his mighty works in most of the mighty works were done in these towns. And, you know, they still didn't believe. And you have to think about that and realize that Jesus, you know, performed these miracles to it wasn't just about that he cared because he cared so much yes and he wanted to heal these people but those those acts were also they were meant to authenticate his ministry and who he was so people would believe who he is and that's more important than the works I mean more important he showed it many times more important than healing the lame and the sick was the fact that he forgave their sins. That was even more important. They were saved for eternity, not just for now. You know, and if you wonder about what kinds of things did he do in those towns, or if you go back to chapter 11 um, in verse 4, Jesus um, tells his disciples to go back and tell John the Baptist. John the Baptist had sent a message and said, you know, I want to confirm that Jesus is the one that I'm, you know, introducing here the one that I'm speaking about and it's not that his his faith was wavering he just wanted that um, confirmation. he was going through a lot and um, he wanted he wanted to get the ball rolling and he wanted Jesus to come out there and you know and and tell everybody this is who he is and Jesus has answered um, to him he said go back and tell John these things which you hear and see the blind see the lame walk the lepers are can cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So in essence, yes, he's saying to John, I am he. I am he, the one that you're talking about. So, okay, the next thing I wanted to speak about were, oh, yes, the, so basically, um, those are the mighty works that were done in these towns, and they still didn't believe. You know, they wanted to keep Jesus in that box and say, oh, we know who you are. We, we saw you when you were growing up, and we don't believe that you're, you know, you're God. We don't believe that. Even though we see all of these great things that you're doing, and we know that only God can do these things, uh, we still don't give you that. You know, we, we're not, we're still not going to believe. And they were hardened of heart, and he told told them, he rebuked them, and he said, you know, if you had done, if, if the works that, which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And if you want to know more about that, you go to Ezekiel, uh, I believe it's chapters 26 through 28, and it actually talks about um, Tyre and Sidon and... And just a note on that, the destruction of those cities was fulfilled in precise detail. So if you read that, speaking about that, um, they had judgment on them. And then he goes on to Capernaum. And if you remember Capernaum from the beginning parts of Matthew, um, Jesus was born in that area. I mean, he grew up in that area. So they didn't want to, they're like, oh no, you know, you, we know where you grew up and we don't, we, we don't believe, even though we see all of these great things, we still don't believe who you are. Um, and he said, you Capernaum who are exalted to heaven because of hosting the son of God in the early years, he said, you're, you know, you're exalted to heaven, but you're going to be brought down to Hades, to hell, because if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, them, it would have remained to this day, you know, because they didn't believe, Capernaum didn't believe. 
But I say to you that it's going to be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. And we're not there in our Genesis studies yet, but um, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. In case you're not familiar with that, they were destroyed because of their extreme wickedness. Um, so that that's really says a lot. Um, I There's a lot more to cover here that's pretty important, and I want to end it right here because I'm going over on my time. And so I'm going to do a part two to Matthew 11, and I will see you guys over there. Thanks.